Hi everyone, Ellen Jaffe Jones, the Veg Coach, and I am at Lidoki Beach right as Hurricane Dahlia is starting to approach. And as you can see, the outer bands are starting to come ashore, and I really don't have a lot of time here. They're trying to get us off the beach. Not too many people left, but it is really a gorgeous day. I just met a woman who was on vacation here and uh, she really wasn't expecting this, but she didn't cancel her vacation. I know that the airport is closed, uh, businesses are closed, schools are closed, and you know, yet this guy is still like grading, putting these ridges in the sand. Actually what they do, these little bulldozers, they clean off the beach. Unfortunately, people use it sometimes like a trash bin or worse, a cigarette ashtray, because they used to put this kind of sand in ashtrays. When I was growing up, but it really is a gorgeous day here, really dramatic as the outer bands of Hurricane Adelia are making the usually calm Gulf of Mexico look more like the Pacific Ocean, or at least the Atlantic. Now some people say that the media makes these kinds of storms, uh, overplays them, and yes, the storm is supposed to make landfill, a landfall a bit north of here in the Gainesville, Big Bend area, uh, and more in Tampa rather than Sarasota, which is a little bit to the south of Tampa. So I think we're out of the clear, but you never know. I was here during the summer of 2005, I think it was, we had four hurricanes, including Charlie, which they said was gonna come up our driveway on Anna Maria Island, where I live, lived at the time. And instead, 90 miles to the south, it decided to make a right-hand turn into Port Charlotte. So that kind of thing happens. And you just have to deal with it. And I will take a Florida summer, even with all this, over a Midwest, St. Louis summer where I grew up, and spent a lot of hot summers where there is no breeze, where there is no clean air, and storms are kind of nature's way of clearing out uh, the atmosphere, cooling down the temperature of the Gulf. Unfortunately, as humans have brought it to max temperature, this weekend I was up in northern Florida where this hurricane is supposed to make landfall, and they have some amazing cool streams, uh, streams up there, and springs like uh, Jenny Springs, like, um, uh, Blue springs. They're just all these beautiful springs that are very cold to float down. You go tubing or kayaking or canoeing, and that's that's what we did this past weekend. So it was lovely. But at Floridians, that's what we do, and so you do things like that to kind of cool off. And as you can see, it really is uh, a pretty cool day here. No sweat pouring off my face um, like it might be in other parts of the country. So this is kind of like what I call our winter. You know, generally we have to stay inside in air conditioning for two or three months during the summer and then the rest of the year it is pretty darn good. And it's even good now. I mean, I did see runners uh, and I would be running this morning if I didn't feel like I needed to kind of get back to my shelter. As I was driving here, there were all kinds of bells and warnings and sirens going off on my phone. If you're at a level A uh, flood zone, you need to get to an evacuation center. Well, that's what we are right down here at sea level, but obviously there are a few people who are out here to see the spectacle, enjoy nature, and I think they would rather we get off the beach, but what are you gonna do? This is kind of a once every few years event where you get a storm that is this close. And at any point, it could make that turn into shore. And that's what I wanna say. I mean, predictions, predicting weather forecasting has gotten a whole lot better in the more recent years, but it still is sometimes more of an art than it is a science. And as we have seen fairly recently, uh, these storms can kind of turn on a dime. Sometimes you have these upper level troughs and currents that will push a storm closer inland. And these folks have brought their kids, they must be here on vacation. <laughs> and they are not turning around and going back. A, because the airport's closed, and B, who wants to be on the road driving through these things uh, if you don't have to at this point. So one of the other things that happens uh, as a realtor is this little phrase in contracts called force majeure, and that means uh, big bad thing that's happening that we can't control. It may be mother nature, it may be terrorism, it may be uh, some act of God that is just gonna mess things up. So what happens in Florida when there's a named storm is you can't buy insurance. So that makes it difficult, especially if you're financing a property to have a closing. So you need to check with your realtor. Um, obviously, if you were supposed to be closing in the last few days, you would have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> so. You know, it just, everything gets pushed back and delayed. Not really a big deal. It's just something that, again, we have to deal with. And there are lots of resources as realtors that we can provide. I just got an email this morning and I read all this stuff religiously just to make sure I'm current and know 
what kinds of resources I can offer to my customers. So as I walk away from the beach, you really can see the contrast. The sun is just about to leave us as the dark clouds of the storm approach. And you can see, uh, I think it's supposed to start raining officially in a couple of hours. So even though it looks like it's right offshore, which it is, uh, it still may take an hour or two to actually produce rain and fall on our heads. But I'm going to head back because I think that's probably a good idea. If you have questions or concerns about living in hurricane country, and like I said, I lived through a summer where we had five of them, lost electricity for two weeks, got to know our neighbors really well as we enjoyed our defrosting frozen foods. So there are lots of advantages, so many advantages to living here. I wouldn't live anywhere else. Lido Key Beach, it's just this amazing place where I love to run. The sand is so flat and they have great services and amenities here. They just redid the bathrooms, so much better than a porta potty <laughs> that you have at races, that kind of thing. But uh, it is, it's beautiful here and there's just no place else on earth. I would rather live, vacation, and enjoy life. And it's important to come out and enjoy the Mother Nature's show, even though this is a reminder that the World Health Organization has said the number one thing we can do to reduce our carbon footprint is to give up animal agriculture. So to the extent you can do that, and I'm just playing around, walking back and forth here, watching as I change positions, how Mother Nature is really coming up with a show here. So stay safe. Let me know how you're doing if you live in Florida, how you're coping with Mother Nature and her changing ways, in particular this storm, Adelia. All right, everyone, got to run. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more fun and enthusiasm from this 70-year-old vegan realtor. If you have any real estate needs to just, you know, Choose your favorite vegan realtor, okay? All right, gotta run.